All right, so today I got a special treat for you. I'm gonna show you the coolest design trend of 2020. Comic Sans. Just kidding. But today we're gonna show you the coolest design trends of 2020. Some of these you can apply to your business. Some of these you may not want to. Uh, maybe they're over your head, but this is at least gonna give you some options and some new ideas of ways that you can improve your art and grow as a graphic designer. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and roll right into it. What's up guys, this is Adrian Boisel and welcome back to another Adrian Graphics and Marketing video. Today I have something fun. We're gonna share the top graphic design trends of 2020. Yes, there are a bunch of trends that we're gonna cover, but we're gonna cover the top 10 today. Uh, things that I think you will find very interesting and maybe you haven't even seen some of these. Maybe some of them you have. You may have noticed them on your MacBooks because I know Mac, Mac has used some of these design trends with their most recent updates, what they've done. And some of these more innovative companies like Instagram and Facebook are also implementing some of these design trends as well. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. And we're going to talk about the top 10 design trends of 2020. But first, I need you guys to hit that like button smash the like button and hit the subscribe button because I got lots of content and most of the people I've seen on my channel are actually not subscribed. So if you're watching this video and you're not subscribed, please do me a huge favor, hit that subscribe button. We really need that support. We need the YouTube algorithm to see us and notice that, hey, we're putting out amazing stuff. Let's go ahead and roll into it. So the first graphic design trend of 2020 that I wanted to talk about is liquid. Now you'll see here on my Google browser, I have the liquid kind of, uh, I just Googled liquid graphic design trend and it showed up with this one. This is the one that I felt like really matched and was most accurate to what I was looking for um, in terms of the style that I've seen out there. You know, like I said, Apple uses the liquid trend on their backgrounds on their phones. It's one of the most popular backgrounds that you'll see uh, nowadays going around, but this liquid trend is really cool and there's a lot of gradients. So it's also liquid plus gradients. So it's kind of a double trend there. Um, but they're using gradients that go from the, the bright blues to the pinks to the teals to the oranges and uh, some of those lighter colors and it's really fluid. And you can just see some of the other ones here um, that are on my screen that are also really, really nice. Just really cool stuff. They're very, very popular. You'll see a lot of different companies using these graphic design trends. Um, we haven't used them yet, but I'm sure we'll, we'll explore that and probably do some projects where we can use that. We have a client called NextGen and this may be a good opportunity to try that for them and implement some of those, uh, some of those new design styles and trends. All right, so number two um, is actually character illustrations and digital painting. Digital painting has really, really skyrocketed in the last couple of years with the creation of the Google, not the Google, but the Apple Pencil and the tablets as well as the Wacom Cintiqs. A lot of artists, graphic designers and graphic artists are actually taking their pencils and doing amazing drawings and illustrations with apps like Procreate and there's also one that Adobe has as well. Um, but these Procreate style apps allow you to actually draw and paint as if you were using a real paintbrush and you can do some really, really incredible stuff. So what we actually did is I had one of my graphic designers, Brian, go in and recreate all of our actual pictures. So here's a picture of my website or a screenshot uh, recording of my website. And you can see here my photo, Chris's photo, Amanda's, Ian's, Brian, who actually did all the artwork and Caesar and our whole team. We have illustrations of everybody on the team and these were digitally painted. All of these images were digitally painted. There's like something funny going on in this one here, but they were all digitally painted. And so this is a really good uh, graphic design trend as well. You can see here, this one actually really looks painted, very organic looking. Um, so it's really cool. This is a really popular trend that's been coming out more and more often. We're actually gonna be trying to implement this into all the facets of our website. Personally, this is one of my favorites because I am an artist at heart. That's what I've been doing the longest. I started as a little kid drawing. I've always been drawing. And so now I have a talented guy on my team like Brian who does painting and does art. I just don't have the time for it. I don't have the practice and I don't have the time for it. My specialty when I do do graphic design still is logo design. So I'm gonna leave the painting and that type of digital art to the best people on my team. And as you can see here, we've got some pretty incredible stuff going on with that. So that's number two. Now number three, and this is a really cool one, is the 3D clay modeling and 3D clay art, I should say. Um, you'll see companies like Instagram. I think I've shown this. Let me pull this one up here at the beginning. Instagram did it and you can see just the depth and the texture 
of these designs are really, really neat. They're able to create some really cool stuff that actually looks like clay. So there's some great programs like Cinema 4D where you can create these puppets and then you can render those out as an actual graphic design piece and implement those into other things. You can cut out the backgrounds and put some other art in there, which is really neat. But there's a, just a few different artists out there that are doing this type of style. I really like it. It's not something that we do. Um, I don't know if we'll do any stuff like this, but here's another cool one. Again, you can see it has a lot of texture, a lot of depth as, it's, as it loads here, it just takes a minute. But these designs have a lot of depth, depth and texture to them. Um, and they just, they really pop out with that three dimensional look. So this is really, really cool. All right, now number four, and this is one of this, one of my favorites actually, because I actually, when I draw, I draw with a charcoal pencil and this really matches my style is the monochrome. Uh, the monochrome style has become really, really popular. As you can see here, this monocle one uh, with the slashes through it. There's a photograph behind it with the guy uh, kind of silhouetted out almost and then the fonts um, on top of him. This is a really cool design trend that I'm a big fan of, I think. Uh, the monochrome design is really, really neat for more sophisticated uh, attorneys, things like that. There's a lot of different brands out there that can really utilize this monochrome look um, to give themselves kind of a unique and different look without using all the crazy bright uh, popping colors. I personally uh, love this style, but I also am a big fan of colors. So just using it, you know, at the right time uh, for concerts or for theaters and different things like that. Uh, could be really, really effective. And uh, the monochrome stuff is typically what I do whenever I start a logo design. If I can do a logo design and start it in black and white and a monochrome style look, when I add color, it makes it look even better. So great designers, I notice great logo designers will start their stuff in black and white and in a more monochrome look and then evolve it with color later on. So monochrome is number four, uh, which is really, really neat. And then number five, which is also really cool, is a new style you've probably seen as well, is the overlap or overlay. Um, this style has been getting more and more popular with people taking fonts and actually overlapping them together. People also doing logos, like you can see here on this Pinterest logo here, overlapping colors to make a different color. You can see here people doing it a lot with fonts. Fonts is probably the big thing. Um, and then you can see here even some posters that people are doing where they're overlapping colors on top of icons. Um, little splashes of colors. There's just a bunch of different samples and examples and you can Google this if you just go to Google and type in overlap graphic design or overlay. Let's just change that there to overlay graphic design. I'm sure it'll give us some different stuff as well. So you can see here, here's some other great examples of overlay. Coca-Cola, uh, Agent Orange. You can just see all these different brands that are using this overlap and overlay graphic design. Really cool trend. Um, very outside the box, very kind of creative and abstract. Uh, if that's your personality, that's your style, um, here's just some great examples that I can show you that uh, you may want to take advantage of. So, And then let's move on to number six. So number six is personally one of my favorites. I'm very much a bright and bold kind of colored person, but bold fonts. Using big, bold fonts has become very popular in 2020. I've noticed, and we're already seven months in, actually eight months in now. It's crazy how fast this year's going by, but there's actually uh, a lot of styles that are coming out with different fonts that are really, really bold, more rounded, more squared, but bold. All these big, bold fonts that companies are using nowadays are really helping them stand out and be a little bit different from everybody else that is using the typical Times or Arial or, or even Montserrat, which is probably the most bold, but also the most popular font of 2020. Um, I noticed the Montserrat font becoming popular when Google Fonts uh, published it and put it on their platform and people started using it everywhere. I noticed it's like probably one of the most common fonts out there right now. And they have everything from super thin all the way up to super bold and they call black. Um, so black, the black fonts that are really, really bold um, or extra bold are really, really cool. And Montserrat happens to have probably the widest range of control over how wide and how bold that font is. So bold fonts can be really, really good to grab people's attention. As you can see here on this little graphic, um, it's really nice. It's just an attention getter, grabs your attention and focuses right there on the center of the image. Um, it's just a really cool font style. And so we use bold fonts a lot in what we do. It's just one of our graphic design styles. So I would encourage you, uh, if you wanna have something that really pops and stands out and really gets the actual message, the content of that, uh, to stand out, then using some bold fonts can really help you do that. Now, number seven is line art. This is something I'll tell you that uh, I noticed probably about seven or eight years ago, kind of popping up into the scene, becoming more and more popular as I got onto Adobe Stock and some of these other stock websites and saw other graphic designers out there and Instagram specifically, I saw a lot of artists doing what's called line art. And as you can see here on my screen, line art is really, really neat. It's a really unique style 
where you're taking a, a detailed illustration, but you're using all lines to create the whole piece. And so there's a lot of different styles uh, of line art when it comes to, you know, whether thin lines like this or the bolder stuff like this, it's more character illustrated. Here's some other good examples where people are using them in icons and more like characters and then in music. So there's a lot of different styles for line art um, that you can, you can implement, but line art is a really cool and trending uh, graphic design style that has become really, really popular, and I don't think it's going anywhere. I think it's just going to become even more popular, especially with so many people uh, creating them on stock websites. I see line art everywhere on like Adobe Stock and Shutterstock and these stock websites where you can buy these icons from. Uh, they're really most prominent with icons. And then number eight is something that you'd probably be really familiar with as a graphic designer because this is something that we've been talking about for a few, few years now is the soft and light UI uh, design, which you can see here on my right hand side. Uh, there's these bars. You'll notice that there's no hard edges, no hard lines. Everything's faintly shadowed. It's a really soft look. You can see here how this whole image here, other than the text, is just light shadowing. And they were able to do some pretty incredible things with just using some very light shadowing. So these light look, the softer approach, uh, has worked really, really well with brands, and Apple is probably the biggest one to use that soft AI and that soft user experience and user interface look. Um, there's tons of companies using it right now. It's probably, personally, one of my favorite styles. Um, it's not something that we do a lot of because it just doesn't match up with what we do, but I've noticed with, the, with interfaces on apps, it's become very, very popular. So if you're an app designer, I would encourage you to really deep dive deep into the soft UI because uh, it's really nice and fluid and clean and professional looking. And um, I hope we get a project, a, an app project, where we actually can experiment and play around with that soft UI look, because it's a really popular trend. I only see it uh, growing from here. So, And then let's jump into number eight. Now we're going to have some fun. Well, look at this thing. This is crazy. So if you look at the graphic design trends, this website here is called Ion Design. And one of the things that's become uh, really, really popular as of late is the variable fonts. Now, variable fonts, um, work like this. There's actually a website you can go to called v-fonts.com and what it allows you to do is going down from thin or narrow all the way to the weight of the font to super bold and you can adjust that and then there's even some other ways um, I believe that's in here or in some other sites. Here we go and you can adjust the italics and make it more italic or not. So each font that you mess with is going to have more options like this one has width so you can change the width of the font, you can change the height of the font. Uh, and the weight, so there's a lot more options with different fonts, but this variable fonts allows you to create more of a custom font uh, that gives you more control and more uniqueness when you're doing a logo design or you're doing type um, for a website and, and a graphic design piece. A lot of people are using variable fonts now to kind of stack and scatter and create really abstract designs with fonts. I noticed that there's been a really big craze around fonts, hand-drawn fonts, uh, hand lettering and just fonts in general have become really, really popular. There are people that are doing graphic design pieces just on fonts alone. So if you want to actually implement some really cool styles and strategies, things that are going to be unique compared to everybody else and you want to stay up to speed, check out v-fonts.com. It's a really great tool and it's going to allow you to kind of play around with some different fonts. Look at this one here, Pangea VAR, and this one's amazing. You can do spacing, extenders, apertures, alternative. I mean, there's so many different things that you can do here and controlling some of these fonts. So there's just a lot of control that you can have with variable fonts. And so I see this being something that Adobe implements more and more of into their platform, just something you want to look out for and just be aware of. And uh, so you understand that if a client asks you, hey, do you do anything with variable fonts? Okay, now the last one, and this is probably my uh, most interesting one, and this is the most advanced to say, to say the least out of all of them, is AR, augmented reality, using designs that you put and actually incorporating them into everyday life. So there are apps that have uh, AR features available in them. Um, apps like Snapchat and other ones are already implementing things like that. Uh, you may even see a little bit on Instagram stories, but AR, and I'll just show you this guy. This is Don Allen III. He does a lot of this AR augmented reality design. And what you'll notice here is he has a background. His background is a video. It's an alive, not a live video, but it's a recorded video of his desk with his kind of character in the background. And what he did is he actually dropped his graphic design, his AR augmented reality design into this. And I'm just gonna play this video so you can see firsthand. So you can see here, he was actually able to take a fully animated character and drop it into his reality, into his live, basically video and drop this in here and actually make it all work. So augmented reality, I see this being a really trending thing as time 
goes on. There are people that are using Adobe Arrow, I believe, to create these characters and create these um, these little animations and, and illustrations. And so you can create the characters and then drop them into your programs. And then those things can be imported to other programs like Snapchat and stuff like that. So augmented reality is number 10. That's a great design trend, something that's going to get more and more popular. I'm guessing that it takes a lot longer to produce because just the amount of time and creativity and work that it takes to go into this. And there's probably a bigger learning curve. But if you can get into the augmented reality design, I think there's going to be a huge market for it. Um, and that's just my opinion. I think there's going to be a lot of people that, that get up to speed on this and you're going to see it more and more often on even apps probably like Facebook and other things like that. So those are the 10. You got liquid, you got digital painting, 3D clay, uh, you got the monochrome, you got overlay and overlap, you got heavy fonts, you got line art, you got soft light, you got variable fonts, and then you got last but not least the AR augmented reality design. So those are the top 10 trends. Just some things I wanted to share with you if you guys haven't seen those. Just make sure that you guys are staying up to speed with all the current graphic design trends. If you're still using Bleeding Cowboy or Trajan font, it's time to let those things go. Those fonts are, those fonts are dead. Some of these graphic design trends that are old, you just need to put some new things into your toolkit and that's what I wanted to arm you guys with today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. I look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. And as always, keep looking up.